The thing about mountains is that you have to keep climbing them and that it's always hard, but there's a view from the top every time when you finally get there. May 15, 1938, Nancy Garden was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Her love for books and writing began at a young age when her mother showed her the wonders of books through reading to her. Her childhood was filled with being read to by her parents and having her father tell her tales of fishing trips and animals with human qualities, some which he wrote down for her. Her early childhood propelled her into writing, but while she began at the age of eight and never stopped, as an adult she struggled to find a career path, spending years working in the drama field, teaching, and editorial work. In 1971, her first two books were published, What Happened in Marston, and a non-fictional book called Merlin, City Split in Two. During this time, she was an editor in New York, but soon after, her and her lifelong partner of 45 years, Sandy Scott, moved to Massachusetts. She was 43 years old when the first publications happened. She then wrote at least a book a year, but usually several. There isn't a genre that Garden hasn't mastered. She has worked ranging from humorous picture books, serious literary fiction, horror, mystery, historical fiction, and nonfiction. Although there are far too many books for me to discuss each one, Garden is famously known for one in particular, Annie on My Mind. It was published in 1982 and was critically acclaimed, but attracted controversy because of its lesbian characters Annie and Liza who fall in love. It was one of the first teen novels to feature lesbian characters in a positive light. She said, I wrote it to give solace to young gay people, to let them know they are not alone and that they could be happy and well-adjusted, and also to let heterosexual kids know that gay people aren't monsters, she told Booklist in a 1996 interview. But in 1993, the book was banned by the Kansas City school system and burnt in demonstrations. Garden was stunned by the news that her book had been burned, and when asked by a reporter for her reaction, she said, Burned? I didn't think people burned books anymore. Only Nazis do that. Two years later, after students pushed to have the book returned, a case for the ban went on trial and lasted for two months. In 1995, it was determined that Garden's novel was educationally suitable to be in schools. Van Bever determined that removing Annie on my mind from school libraries was an unconstitutional attempt to suggest what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, religion, and other matters of opinion. Annie on my mind has been nominated for and won many awards, such being 1982 Booklist Reviewer's Choice, nominated for Gay Book Award and Golden Kite Award, ALA Best Books, 1983 ALA Best of the Best, and also this award renewed numerous times, ALA Best Books of Young Adults for the past 25 years, one of the best books for young adults in the last four decades of the 20th century, the Mach Prince Award, and in 2014 it received the Lee Lynch Classic Award by the Golden Crown Library Society for being one of the most important classics in lesbian history. Annie on My Mind also caused her to receive the Robert D. Downs Intellectual Freedom Award in 2001 for her work defending the novel from the Kansas ban. The Margaret A. Edwards Award for Lifetime Achievement was awarded to her in 2003, recognizing her lifetime con contribution to writing for teens, citing Annie on my mind. Of Garden and the book, the award committee said, Nancy Garden has the distinction of being the first author for young adults to create a lesbian love story with a positive ending. Using fluid, readable style, Garden opens a window through which readers can find courage to be true to themselves. In 2005, she was awarded the Katadin Award for Lifetime Achievements. In 2007, she was inducted into the Saints and Sinners Literary Festival Hall of Fame, a festival celebrating lesbian and gay authors. The Johnson Country First Amendment Foundation Literary Lit Liberty Award was given to her in 2009. Another book, Hear Us Out, Gay and Lesbian Stories of Struggle, Progress, and Hope, from 1950 to the present helped support the homosexuals who felt alone and out of place. Garden said, LGBT history was being made as fast as I wrote about it. By the time you read the final chapter, it'll have changed again. I hope mostly for the better. A few other books for the LGBT community were Good Moon Rising, The Year They Burned the Books, and Lark in the Morning. These books go beyond being about gays and lesbians. They are about acknowledging the minorities and letting them know they exist. Garden wrote the books all gays, lesbians, and minorities wanted to have as teenagers. She wrote the books kids of lesbian and gay parents needed to read, but lesbian books were not her only books aimed at changing lives. Her heart was so big and full of love for individuals who needed books about their own lives that she also wrote for many other situations that teenagers might find themselves in, such as conflict, tragedy, loneliness, and bullying. 
The End Game was inspired by a terrible shooting at Columbine, Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado in 1999 in which 23 people were wounded and 13 were killed, 15 if you count the two shooters who committed suicide. Everyone was stunned by the tragedy and by similar events before and after. They struggled to understand what makes some kids turn guns on fellow students and teachers. Garden wanted to add, pe add to people's understanding, especially because she believed it might help prevent things like this from happening again. One causal factor stood out to her in news and reports, and it was mentioned over and over again, but never emphasized. The factor is bullying. All the shooters she read about had been victims to severe repeated bullying. She had been bullied as a child and understood a little about how it feels, so she dedicated a novel focused on bullying and the tragic consequences it can have on the bullier and the bullied. Nancy Garden's first generation of readers now have children and grandchildren of their own. Her work has spanned out beyond generations and her stories have touched and inspired and given hope to so many. Sadly, Nancy Garden passed away from a heart attack June 23, 2014 at age 76. She was an amazing author but an even more amazing person. She brought so much truth and honesty about being gay, lesbian, and a minority to her books. She wrote because she loved writing and she wrote for the misunderstood, the judged, and the hurting because she didn't want any LGBT kid growing up alone without the books that didn't that have been and continue to be lifelines for so many as she wrote in Annie on my mind don't punish yourself for people's ignorant reactions to what we all are don't let ignorance win let love Nancy Garden's legacy will always be of that she never let ignorance win she always let love I think kids in every minority need to see people like themselves in books that's an acknowledgement of their existence on this planet and in this society.